Uh, Paleo Joe here. It's time for another quick little video. This one's going to be contentious. Everybody's got an opinion on uh, glues um, that they use to to repair fossils. Uh, there's about as many opinions out there as there are people with noses on their faces. This is a this is a big one. I've got a couple that I use, a couple that I've tested out myself, and again, I'm just going to scratch the surface today because there are so many different types of uh, materials to use. I can't possibly cover them all. Um, in the field, I like to use field consolidants. A field consolidant is a type of glue that holds something together, um, stabilizes it while you get it out of the field. This happens often with, uh, with dinosaur bones, mostly with dinosaur bones. We do use it also with trilobite collections. Um, in some cases, the trilobites have a very thin exoskeleton. Uh, a great example is in the Rochester Shale or um, the Shale uh, in Pendixie Quarry, where if you break the rock open, the rock still got a lot of moisture in it, and the trilobite exoskeletons begin to spall. They begin to peel off the off the off the matrix itself. So I'm going to cover a couple little quick things today. Uh, hopefully you can follow this. Um, this is going to be again a short and simple one. Um, best thing I can tell you is go in and do some research on the types of glues that you can use. First of all, I'm going to start with something very very simple. Uh, white glue. Uh, white glue works really good for some types of rock. Uh, in this case, uh, this is a, a limestone. Uh, from the uh, Green River Formation. Uh, when this thing breaks, uh, just white glue works really well. You can go out and buy uh, simple clamps that they have uh, in Ace Hardware, Home Depot. You can clamp the thing together. You want to make sure you clamp it together because otherwise you might end up with some small fissures, some small cracks that don't completely close. But if you use the white glue, it's going to take a while for it to set. Again, clamp it in place and set it aside for a day or two. I started off using something called Vinac. Uh, Vinac is a mixture of little tiny plastic beads like this. Uh, they come from the Black Hills Institute is where I get mine. This is by no means a commercial for these organizations, these companies. Um, I'm just giving you the information and let, uh, let you make your own decisions. Uh, but the Black Hills Institute does have these little white plastic beads. Uh, what they do is you can take this stuff and there they are. They're kind of like grains of sugar, grains of salt really small plastic beads. You take these beads and you mix them with acetone. And you mix them with acetone until you get the right consistency that you want. Uh, in my case, um, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to try real hard. I've got a bottle of, uh, of Vinac right there. And what you're doing with it, you're waiting until you can, you mix it together. This is going to be a while. You mix it together until you see strings begin to form between your fingers and you mix it to the consistency that you want very thin you want very thin strings there we go you can see the strings forming between my fingers that string right there that's the plastic that's melt there you go right there that's the plastic that's melted that's going to do actually the work it's going to hold the things together so what you do is you mix it together to whatever consistency you want in the field for a field consolidant you want to have a very thin coat a very light coat the thicker you make it the harder it's going to be to prep things when you get them out of the field so i like to use a very thin uh, consistency of vinac that one you mix with acetone um, you, what you can do is you can actually buy these things pre-mixed uh, from a company called Paleobond. And Paleobond does sell several different types. Uh, they actually do sell a penetrant stabilizer. The penetrant stabilizer is what I just talked about, the, the stabilizing of the stuff in the field, very thin coat. Um, they have different kinds of fossil prep adhesives, uh, thicknesses, depending on what you're using. Um, and I also buy these bottles and I make my own. There's my Vinac right there that I use in the field to stabilize some of the fossils. Again, that's acetone mixed with plastic beads. There's another company that uses something called Bootvar. Now, I've got one here. It's, again, plastic. These are almost like, uh, gosh, almost like uh, powdered sugar. Uh, this is Bootvar from a company called Talus. Uh, Bootvar B76 mixes with acetone. Acetone, again, is something that's going to melt the plastic. It's going to be fairly stable. Uh, it's going to be reversible, but not that easily reversible. Uh, you have to mix a lot of acetone in, in with what you're trying to reverse, you know, just um, pure acetone. That will help melt the plastic, but it takes a while. It's going to be, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So you can buy uh, acetone, uh, or the stuff that is uh, used with acetone, the Bootvar B76. However, they also make a great one. 
Boot Bar B98. This one mixes with alcohol. I love this stuff because you can reverse it. Uh, a story I was told when I was down at the University of Tennessee uh, at their museum out there at the, at the Gray Fossil site, uh, the story was told that a, a student had put together a turtle carapace. They put the turtle carapace together, but it wasn't right. But they used the B98 with alcohol. So what they did is they poured alcohol in the bottom of a container, set a, a block in there, and put the turtle shell on top. Just the fumes of the alcohol loosened up the glue enough that they could then replace and rebuild that turtle carapace the way it was supposed to be. It was easily reversible. That's something that you want to keep in, keep in mind. If you need possibly need to reverse the process, the alcohol seems to work really well. Now, I also, when I make these things, and I can't remember now because I bought so many of them, I have my own glue tubes. These tubes are purchased, uh, again, for the life of me, I cannot remember where I bought these. I bought so many of them. But then what you do is you fill these tubes with the, with the glue that you want. You crimp the ends, and like that, and then you mark it. This one happens to be Bootvar B98 with alcohol. This is thick. So this is something I want to use, and I want to glue something, and done, and this is the final glue process. I also have Bootvar, uh, I've got one here, <laughs> I, that one says very thick. Uh, so again, it's something that I want to use and uh, have it ready. Uh, then I've got another one here, Bootvar Thin, so this is again a field consolidant. So you can mix up your own glues, you can put them in these tubes, and then you're all set. I was out in South Dakota this year, and I was using something I'd never used before, and I like it. I haven't bought any yet. I haven't tested it, so I, you know, I don't know anything about it. But I, I seem to really like it. Uh, it's called Starbond. Uh, Starbond was something that we were putting on uh, out in the field, the field consolidant. It seemed to work very quickly. Uh, it dried up very quick. It stabilized things very nicely. Uh, was very flowy. This similar to the Bootvar, similar to the Vinac. It did its thing. But for some reason, I seem to like it just a little bit more. I have not purchased any yet. I cannot, you know, other than what I used it in the field, I cannot verify how great it is. But I did use some of that uh, Starbond, and that's also available uh, online as well. Now, if you're gluing something together forever, you never want it to come apart, and you're going to put it together exactly perfectly the way it's supposed to be, you'd, you'd use some epoxy. Uh, epoxy is something you use, again, if you're trying to put something together forever. Now, what we do in some cases with trilobites, uh, we get a trilobite that breaks open, breaks in half. Then what we got to do is we got to glue it back together and, and finish prepping it. What we do is we, we break away the matrix from around the uh, exoskeleton. So you just have, and I wish I had one with me, and I don't have one this, this, at that, that stage, just so that there's uh, the smallest amount of matrix around the exoskeleton. Then you take a little bit of epoxy, spread it on uh, where it broke, all the way around and in the middle. Then you glue it back together and you clamp it, and then you have to finish prepping it down uh, through the matrix, either with a, a mini jackhammer or air brake unit. So lots and lots of opportunities there for glue. I apologize, this has been a kind of a long video. Um, there are so many things out there. Again, you probably need to just experiment, uh, do things the way you want to do them, uh, find what you like, and then just continue to use that. One last thing that I do use sometimes when I run out of when I run out of something else uh, that I've got is this stuff right here. Um, I, I do use crazy glues in the field. Uh, I keep them with me just in case I, I need them. Uh, I don't find that they're easily reversible. So if I make a mistake in the field, I'm done. That's it. It's not going to come apart. Um, it does uh, melt a little bit with acetone, but it, I found it, it doesn't work quite as well as the glues that you make yourself that are reversible, either the Bootvar and even the Vinac using acetone, pure acetone, will help release uh, release the, uh, the material. So when you're in the field and you've got something, uh, let's go back to a dinosaur bone, and you're cleaning it off, you put a little bit of uh, st a pen stabilizer on it and some dust and dirt falls on top of it, some grains of sand fall on top of it, they're going to get stuck to it. And what you do is when you get back to the laboratory, you got to clean all that off. So again, you don't want to use too much of it. You don't want to use heavy glues. You want to use a, a light coat of something very thin that can then be easily removed. Uh, real quick, short and simple, no it wasn't, uh, on some glues. Again, like I said before, I'm not a commercial for any of these companies. I, I'm not uh, verifying what they say, what they do. Um, I just use some of these products. Use them for yourself. Go out and, and get them for yourself. You can buy small quantities of these things. Uh, for example, like I said, from Black Hills Institute, they've got it. Paleo Bond has got it. You can buy small jars like this. Uh, very inexpensive. Use it up and see what you think.
Um, the boot bar, you got to buy a pound of it, but in my gosh, it'll last you the rest of your life. Um, so again, just go out and try it. Uh, there are so many different types out there. Everybody's got their own opinion. Um, I see on my clock right there, I'm about 10 minutes uh, into the video now, so I'm going to stop. You guys have a good time out there. Keep digging, keep having fun. When you find something, you break it, get some glue, put it back together, and enjoy the fossils that you do find. Y'all take care, and I'll see you sometime next week.